What's the difference between errors.wrapf, errors.errorf, and fmt.errorf? I'm going to answer that. Hi, I'm Jonathan Hall. Today's video is inspired by this post on Stack Overflow. This was posted a couple of years ago, and I actually replied uh, to the post, and I gave an answer, but I thought it would make sense to dive in a little bit more uh, in a video here, so that's what I'm going to do today. So now, actually, the, the first thing about this particular question is it makes an incorrect assumption. The question asks about three functions in the standard library, errors.wrapf, errors.errorf, and fmt.errorf. However, if we actually look at the standard library, we'll see that those functions don't actually exist there. So here I'm looking at the errors package in the standard library, and it's a very, very small package. You see there's only uh, a few functions, as, is, new, and unwrap, four functions. So that wrap f and that error f don't come from here. Where do they come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. They come from this package. This package is called uh, github.com slash pkg slash errors. Now this package was predominantly written by Dave Cheney, which we can see by looking over here at the GitHub contributors chart. Back in 2016 and uh, some updates in 2019, Dave Cheney wrote this package. And of course it's a public open source package, so others have contributed. I think my name's on here somewhere. Ah, oh, there it is. But let's, let's talk about what the package does and how it's different from the standard library. Now, something really important to keep in mind when considering this is that this package is fairly old. It was first written back in, it looks like 2015, 16, and the Go standard library has changed somewhat significantly since then, especially as it relates to error handling. But let's look at what this package does, and I'll uh, explain a little bit of the history about it and, and why there's maybe room for confusion in this original Stack Overflow question. So here I am on the uh, Godoc page for the github.com slash pkg slash errors package. And of course, there's a lot of information here at the top level, but then let's look at the index because that sort of gives us a nice overview of what the package does. Now, first thing we can see is it has an as function. There's also this is and unwrap and new. Now those are the same four functions we just saw in the standard library. So those are duplicated here. Um, but what else do we have? We have something called cause. Oh, there's that error f that was being asked about. And then we have a few others here, uh, these with uh, functions, with message, with message f, with stack, wrap, and wrap f, the other one we were asked about in the question. And then some uh, other types of frame and stack trace. So the first thing to be aware of about this package is that this was created with the idea of the ability to wrap errors, which did not previously exist, or at least not in a well-defined way, in the Go standard library. And if we look at the change log, for Go 1.13, we'll see that they added something called error wrapping. And here we can see that they added some functions to the standard library. They added errors.is, errors.as, and errors.unwrap. So three of the four functions in the standard library's error package were added in Go 1.13. Prior to that, you basically had new, and that was kind of all you had there. Keep that context in mind when we look back at the uh, PKG errors Go doc. Maybe it starts to make a little bit more sense. Let's look at it again. Now we have as, is, unwrap. And the truth is these were added in, the, uh, in this package also around the same time for compatibility with the standard library. If we look at the historical versions of the same package, uh, we can see the older versions. I'm gonna jump back in time to January 3rd, 2019. This is well before Go's standard library supported error wrapping. And we'll see that the errors, uh, the PKG errors package has a much smaller uh, interface now. You see there's no is, as, or unwrap. Instead, there's these other functions. So let me talk about what these functions did in the past, because that will help explain why they're no longer necessary and, and what they were replaced by. Again, the basic concept of this package was the ability to wrap errors. Uh, and that, that's so that you can take one error from, from some function you've called, wrap it with your own contacts, and pass it uh, up, this, up the call chain. So that was done prior to Go 1.13, with this package. Let's look at some of the uh, function signatures uh, with message here, for example. This allows you to specify an existing error and then a new message of your own. Then the error that's returned contains your new message and the old error uh, that can be unwrapped somehow. How do you unwrap the original error? You can use this cause function and that uh, pulls the 
original error out of an error if it's if it's there, right? Just like with message, you could use with message f that would allow you to use formatting just like printf or sprintf. And then we have with stack, uh, which would allow you to attach a stack trace to an error without adding a message. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And then we have these wrap and wrap f functions that work just like combining with message or with message f with the stack. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the stack tracing uh, wrapping in, in a moment, we'll get back to that. But the, the important message right now is that this package handled error wrapping and it gave us several different ways to do that before the Go standard library did. So when the Go standard library added uh, error wrapping support, this package wanted to remain compatible, so it added those new functions we saw a moment ago. So that's when this package added as and is and unwrap because those are the methods that the standard library uses to allow wrapping and unwrapping errors. Now at the same time that the standard library added the is, as, and unwrap functions to the errors package, they added a new capability to the existing fmt.errorf function in the fmt package. So let's talk about that. Now prior to go 113, this function did exist. Uh, and, it, and it worked well. It was just essentially the uh, a way to call errors.new without having to call fmt.sprintf, for example, if you wanted to use some formatting in your error message. Now you're probably already familiar with using percent %s and percent %d and so on in uh, a, a formatting string for fprintf or sprintf or just printf when you want to format a string or a, or a, a number, for example. But they added this new verb called percent %w that sort of magically lets you wrap an error so now you can call fmt.errorf and put a percent %w somewhere in your format string, typically at the end, but it can go anywhere. And as long as that corresponds with an error value in the list of arguments, it wraps that error rather than just treating it as a string. So let me demonstrate with uh, my own example here on the Go Playground. This is just some throwaway code, but it shows, it demonstrates the point. Here my function foo tries to open a file, and if it fails to open a file, then it wraps that error with the fmt.errorf here. So you can see I've added my own uh, descriptive text here, failed to open file colon and the percent %w, and then uh, that percent %w corresponds with the error value. If we run the code, then we see here the error failed to open file, that's my text, and then open foo.txt colon no such file directory, that's the original error message. Now the advantage of doing it with percent %w as opposed to say percent %s, as we would have done in Go 1.12 or earlier, is that it becomes possible to unwrap that error using the unwrap uh, function in the standard library. So where does that leave us? Okay, so github.com slash pkg slash errors was a very popular package, probably still is. Uh, it has been largely, though not completely, obsoleted by Go 1.13's error wrapping support. Almost obsoleted? Okay, what's left? So remember earlier I mentioned this with stack function. What does that do? Well, it attaches a stack trace to an error. It doesn't change the representation of the error in the sense that if you call uh, the errors method on the error, it will return the same string, whatever message was in there before. However, it adds an extra function to that uh, error implementation type that can be used to extract a stack trace. Let's see how that's done. So here's the part of the documentation of the github.com slash pkg errors package that explains how you can retrieve the stack trace from an existing error. It uses this interface. Um, remember, errors are interfaces. Uh, that's the definition of an error in Go, is it's an interface uh, with the error uh, method on it. But you can, of course, include additional methods on your interfaces. So that's how this package adds a stack trace, is it returns an error implementation that has an additional method with a stack trace. So if you want to find that stack trace, then you you can use this little bit of code right here. You basically do a type assertion uh, on your error to see if it matches the stack tracer uh, or, or this, this interface here. And if it does, then you can call the stack trace on it and, and it will return the stack trace where that error was generated or, or where uh, with stack was called. So that's the key functionality that the standard library does not support yet. Uh, there was talk back in the Go 113 days of whether or not to include stack traces and it was declined. Uh, I suppose that there were too many nuances and, and different ways that you might want to, to, to do that or represent a stack trace, and they didn't decide on a standard format. So that's not in the standard library. So let's recap. Prior to go 1.13, if you wanted to, to wrap errors, github.com slash pkg slash errors was a great way to do it. And you would do that by using 
errors.wrapf and errors.errorf. As of Go 1.13, that's no longer necessary if your only goal is wrapping errors. So you may as well just use fmt.errorf in the standard library. And then to unwrap, you can use errors.unwrap or more likely errors.as and errors.is. Read the documentation for details. The one exception is if you want to include stack traces in your errors, then using the github.com slash pkg slash errors package may still make sense. Or maybe you want to implement your own stack trace formatting uh, or capabilities in your own package. Uh, but I think that's a pretty good explanation of the difference between these three functions uh, and when you should use one or the other. Which one do I use? I usually like having stack traces in my errors, so I often use github.com slash pkg slash errors. That's such a mouthful. Or my own implementation sometimes, depending on my circumstances. I think that wraps it up for this question. Uh, if you have any questions about my explanation, leave a comment below. If you enjoy this sort of detailed explanation, be sure to subscribe. And if you learned something, hit the like button. I hope to see you next time.